But like I always tell you, you mo- as a Christian, the moment you are born again, sign an agreement with God that you will read your Bible. If I can I tell you the truth? One of the disciples of Jesus our Lord was a medical doctor. Let's see it. Colossians chap- chapter 4, verse 14. Colossians 4, 14. Put it on screen. Let's be moving very fast. We have a lot of study to do. Colossians chapter 4, verse 14. Because you are not supposed to die in ignorance if you know the word of God. Look. Good friend. And what? And physician. After Matthew, what's the next book? Luke. And to call Luke, Kinesha. Doctor. Luke was a doctor. Not doctor of the law. Medical doctor. In fact, there was a time they were going for missionary work. Paul was sick. He said, I was saved by Dr. Luke. One of us, the mom was sick. And I told him, you have been coming to see me for prayer. Coming to see me for prayer. Please pray for my mom. And I told him, when you get to your mom, let me talk with her. When the mom told me what was wrong with her, I told her, ma, you need to see a doctor. You have fibroid. Your fibroid has grown. You need to be operated quickly. That there's a woman God used me to save like that on our street here. Her fibroid too had grown. It pressed the kidneys. It got to a point, she, if she's walking, urine will be coming out of her body. Her kidneys was being pressed. If she eats small food, she gets so easily, quickly satisfied. And she'll be feeling hungry. But the, the fibroid had pressed the stomach, pressed the kidneys, and pressed her liver. So I told her, madam, She's a CAC member. She has gone to several churches, several mountains, drank several oil. If God will heal you, it won't take long process. How many minutes did he heal all the people that were sick? But sir, if Jesus, or if God decide to heal everybody, how will doctors that are Christians survive? Now, if you send your son to school to become a medical doctor and your pastor is healing everybody, Will you be happy? Answer me now. <laughs> so God won't heal everybody. Jesus went to the pool of Bethsaida. The Bible says all the people there were people that, that called him valid. He healed only one and left. I've healed you. Others go face doctors. But some of you, I don't know. Some people go to church and they leave their brain at home just like what Pastor Tudibakari said. Because of one testimony, woman with the issue of blood, she touched the garment of Jesus. Oh, she was healed. She was healed. Oh, I will not, I not grow. I not grow. If Jesus doesn't heal me, I will not be okay. If Jesus doesn't heal me, I will not be okay. Have you yourself asked, Jesus, this is my problem. What do you want to do to solve it? You can't force him to face, to, to, to give you something that is not his. That is not yours, I mean. So I told this woman, I told this her brother, okay, tell her your mom. It was later when the woman died that he was telling me that the, the, doc, the, the pastor of the woman, he said, he's spiritual, he's spiritual. Your pastor is a small boy man of God. It's not his own fault, but the people didn't accept. But Luke was a doctor. I'm your pastor. I preach to you, I pray for you, but I still go to hospital. I take drugs. I won't be coming here to glory. Praise the Lord. In the next 25 years, in the past 25 years, I've not taken drug. Is it where you are sleeping that those people are sleeping? Is it what you are eating that they are eating? Somebody wakes up, a driver is starting the car for him. A driver will take him to the, to the office. His cook has cooked for him. And he's saying 25 years ago is when I took drug last. And you that you wake up, you wash your car by yourself, your food is not even balanced diet. <laughs> You take rice and kwamo in the afternoon. You take heba in the evening. In the night, you go to Gado Market again to say, eh, Gusi and, and uh, Yashawa. Plus mosquito bite. Luke was a doctor. A medical one. Read your Bible. You know it happened in Lagos. Was it under fashion law or so? Or Amber Day? A, 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 a child was born and that child had serious jaundice. And you know jaundice used to drain blood. 
So at Lutz, they said they were going to uh, 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 um, give this child blood. What do they call this thing? Transfuse the child. The parents said, no, we are members of apostolic faith. You cannot do that. The doctors took the case up. The governor had. The governor went to court ahead of them and got a judgment that the child has right to live. So they induced the child. The child was saved, came back to life. The parents now sued the hospital for giving the child blood without their permission. Can you see where ignorance? I always tell people, the problem of Africa, hear me, is ignorance. They gave God to us and gave us a Bible. We held on God, we are not reading his principles. And you know the white people will always say, anything you want to hide from the black man, do what? Put it in a book and give him the book. He will never open it. Don't be that black man. I will show you five before I begin to teach you the principles and go. Uh, listen, I learned these five things from the Bible. Let me also show you. In Proverbs chapter 23, 1 to 3, that when you go to the house of a rich man, the Bible says put a knife on your throat. Proverbs chapter 23, 1 to 3. Show us on screen. Let's read with NIV version. Now, what does that scripture mean? Put a knife. Go, Nicola, go, Besson, go, this go and cut your neck. He's saying to you, do not allow your appetite to make the rich man to see you as somebody that is needy. That's why some of you, you can't have rich friends. Now, let's go on. Let's see. When you sit to dine with what? With a ruler. Not well, what is before you? There's Kwamo. There's chicken. There's Bokotho. There's Igbe. Yes, and snail. He says, Well, let's read on. And put a knife to your throat if you are giving to gluten, which means if you, are, if you are the type that eats too much, put a knife to your throat. Verse 3. Do not crave his delicacies, for that food is what? Is deceptive. He's watching you. I learned it from the Bible. In fact, this was how God taught me how to relate with the rich. You don't beg them for anything. In fact, bless them. At times when some of them give me a check, I don't go to the bank straight because they will see a lot. So pastor, I've been waiting for this man. She and your pastor. At times when they give me a check, I go and keep it at home. One week is still there. See, I hear. I also learned this again from the Bible. That the end result of living an immoral life is destruction. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 26. If you choose to live an immoral life, you'll be reduced to a loaf of bread. Now, let's read together. Proverbs chapter 6, not chapter 26. Proverbs 6, 26. Proverbs 6, 26. I don't have time more. Let's read. One, two, and let's go. For the prostitute reduces you to what? To a loaf of bread. And the adulteress preys upon your very life. And what do we call immorality in Yoruba? Agbairi. You can't be involved in adultery and not be reduced to a loaf of bread. What will happen to a loaf of bread? They eat you at last. So I learned it from scriptures that eh, if I want to become great, if I don't want to be reduced to a loaf of bread, I should not live an, a life of adultery. I need to be satisfied with the one wife that God has given to me. These are principles I learned. Let's see more, let's see more, let's see more. Another one. I learned, from, from, uh, I learned that from everything, so, sorry, for any, anything to work, work well, you have to work it. Nothing good works on its own. I learned that from the scripture. Proverbs 24, 30 to 32. I learned that too from scriptures. You don't just fold your hands and say, okay, it will work well. Nothing works well except it is being worked. So if you see anything that is working well, some people are working it. Oh yeah, where is it? Where is it? You don't have all the time. Proverbs 24, 30 to 32. Let's read. One, two, and let's go. I went past... The field of the sluggard. Who is the sluggard? Lazy man. All he does is to be playing draft. Watching video. Tied to where? 
watch Facebook, Instagram. You know, there are people doing business on Facebook now. There are people doing business on Instagram. I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about those that waste their precious data just to watch what is happening. He says, they are sluggard. The, okay, let's go on. I went past the field of the sluggard, past the vineyard of the man who lacks judgment. Next verse. We'll stop at I2. Thorns had come up everywhere. The ground was covered with weeds. And the stone was in ruins. 32. I applied my heart to what I observed. And I learned a lesson from what I saw. Please, let's read on. Let's see the lesson he learned. And what is the lesson he learned? A little sleep. A little slumber. A little folding of hands to rest. 34. What we now call? Oh, yeah. Oh. 34. And... Poverty will come on you like a bandit and scarcity like an armed man. So the Bible did not teach us to be lazy. Ti alangba to ba kan gbo dede gbowo soke to patewo ba iyanu lori yen baba o ba dare ngba ye won lo so be eni ti o sise to nwa yanu iya lo mari i learned that from the bible that's why if you see us walking hard in bible lati ri i was telling uh okay for sister busaya during our 24 first uh, they don't like mentioning uh, birthday, sorry, all our children. If you tell, mention their birth date, Ijama uh, Bere. Our own days, we tell them how old we are, but their own days, we don't like you to tell them. My daughter said, so That dinner, I must you say it? I was telling her, uh, and some of her people were listening. If you know what me and my wife have done to get to where we are, that when we were to buy the property at Elebu that time, 500,000, we sat down together. What do we do? How do we do it? Okay. When we were to pay 1 million here that time, we knew how we sat down. Nothing works until people work it. The Bible says, when we saw the field of that man, what happened? Tons. man la lewu. la lewu. But he be he be man lalewo. Go and send to me Koriko. But oh, Lily, she lorry let go me. To bury me, you can't take me. Tell her. Oh yeah, let's go. On, let's go. On, let's learn more. Let's learn more. I learned from the Bible too. I learned that I should open up for learning. That wisdom is the principal thing. Proverbs chapter four verse seven. I learned that one too from the Word of God. Is you just commit your heart to the word. Proverbs 4 7. Let's read together. After the count of three, one, two, and let's go. Wisdom is supreme. Therefore, get wisdom. Though it costs all you have, get on. Can you see that wisdom is not cheap? It's not cheap. It may cost you all you have. Some of you are looking for free wisdom. There is no free wisdom anywhere. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Mo de fe ko se lowo won won ni kin lo mu ye bayi wa o gbo do san ogbon won gbogbon lo fe Ah when one of our daughters wanted to do do her freedom she brought her, her boss to me and pastor papa e ba mi be won and the boss said ah pastor kini mo ko to ni o po kula eran eran kula kan Abi, rice, kula kon. Okay, le kula kon. Adie, meji. Meji, adie, kula kon. Meji. Malt, me lo ruti e kon. Abi, meji. Wine, meji. Wansha akobo bo e lo. Sa e wani, papa, e jweba me be, omu ni, e be kini. Yes, ma, owa oke be. Ah, wani ha, mwani he. On jahira yi nan founyi. The Bible says, though it costs you all. 
Do you think we that relate with fathers, it's easy to relate with them? Go search your scripture. Elijah didn't want to release the man to. Stay here. Stay here. God has sent me somewhere. He said, may God deal with me. If anything but death separates me from you. Some of you, you are to learn, you are to tap grace from your pastor or from spiritual fathers. You are getting offended. Mama, mama, they should do by. One no problem, eh? You want no more. You want no need to let it My own mentor will tell you that his own mentor does not even have time. He just call you, hello? See me by 12 o'clock. He doesn't want to know where you are. He said one day, he came to see him. He prayed for him. He said, I'll go back. From Ibadan to Ota. He said, go back. He said, he now called him three hours after. Have you got him? He said, no, sir. What happened? He said, hold up. He said, may God have mercy on you with your poverty. He said, with my chopper, it's 15 minutes. When I get here in 15 minutes, I will have been doing other things. You are still on the road? May God have mercy on you with your poverty. My mentor said, now said to him, he said, some people are praying for my poverty. <laughs> Wisdom is not free. Wisdom is not cheap. Holy Spirit, let's take one more, let's take one more, let's take one more. It was from the Bible I learned that when dealing with man, remove trust. Jeremiah 17.5. That's, that's where I learned it. If I'm dealing with any man, I won't allow trust to, to cover my eyes from the things I'm supposed to observe. I've had some Christians come to me, uh, uh, so my, I took my accountant from the church, he has duped me. Who told you that it is church that is qualification to employ an accountant? See, ask all my staff working with me. When I give them money, this is 20000 and they want to go, I always tell them, if you move like that and come back and tell me it's not complete, it's none of my business. Count the money. I, so I you. I said, forget that. If you just go out and come back to tell me it's not complete, you're on your own. Let's read it. Let's read it. Let's read it. Let's, let's read it. Let's be fast. This is what the Lord says. Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who depends on flesh for his strength, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. So when you are dealing with man, understand that you are dealing with man. That's why I won't borrow you money if I will not take your handwriting down. Because you are man. I must put your, 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 your writing down. We have salary book, uh, uh, salary ledger. When you collect your salary, you sign. You use your hand to write how much you collect. Why? That's what I saw in scripture. Hello? Okay, you're angry. Now, listen. Let me quickly show you these things about the scripture. Hallelujah. Are you learning? Are you sure? Two things you must know about the Bible. Two things you must know about the Bible. The Bible is the word of God and it is a light that should help you as you walk the walk of life. It is light. You know what David said in Psalm 119, 98 and 99. He said, thy word is a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. The word of God is light. Now you want to walk the journey of life. How do you walk it? Walk it with the knowledge of the word. Now let me show you how light it is to me. When I first got married, I was having challenge with my marriage. And this particular day, I was, I was before the Lord, I was praying, Lord help me. Ah, it's like this marriage thing is not going to work. Oh. And I had God say to me, son, see marriage as a true life stage drama where you cannot afford to make a mistake. Follow your script and don't mind the script of your partner. I say, but what of if my pastor, uh, if, my, if my partner make mistake? 
if my partner make mistake, he said, the movie director knows what to do. It's not your business. Okay, what is my business, Lord? Master your script. Lord, what is my script? He said, go to Ephesians chapter 5. Is it chapter 5 or chapter I can't remember. Yeah. Chapter 5. Go and start to study. And I went to it. I started studying. Husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave up himself for her. Love your wife and be willing to give to her because giving is a proof of love. So what's the number one thing I have to give her? I have to give her attention. That's what every woman needs. If I love her, I must give her attention. So I started. And I discovered that as I was giving her attention, it was not difficult. I know now notice she was not giving me submission. Submission is not part of my script. It's our own script. Wife, submit to your husband as unto the Lord. So, scripturally, wife, your husband is God. So, the way you submit to God, submit to him. Husband, your wife is the church. The way Jesus loved the church, love your wife. If you can love your wife the way Jesus loved the church, I'm telling you, you have peace. Look at the way Jesus loved the church. He said, kill me so that church can survive. You don't love rich like that. When the church comes in the morning, Father, in the name of Jesus, provision is available. He says, part of my job. Loving, you provide for the house. He says, try it and see. And I see that the way I was trying it, my marriage started enjoying the peace that I needed. The word of God is a lamp. When there's confusion, it shows you what to do. I have four minutes. Wow. Number two, the word of God is the wisdom of God. Psalm 1 1. Ah, let me not take that one. There's no time. The first one is Psalm 119 105. I missed it. The second one is Psalm 119 98 and 99. The word of God is the wisdom of God. The word of God is the wisdom of God. You know, when we started teaching uh, in the month of um, June, I told you, I said you don't need to pray for long life and prosperity. The Bible says, children, honor your father and your mother. One, that your days may be long, and two, that it may be well with you. If you honor them, forget, you won't die young. And you won't be poor. But your mommy, your mommy say one, you say ten. You will soon die. Let's summarize. How can the voice of the Bible work for me? Let's take four. How can the voice of the Bible work for me? One, be committed to studying the Bible daily for lessons. Don't read the Bible as storybook. Read to pick lessons. Daily for lessons. Daily for lessons. Daily for lessons. Every day you read your Bible, make sure there is a lesson. Before I came in now, I was going through my uh, shelf and I saw my devotion book where I used to write my daily Bible study lessons of uh, 2007. I saw it there now. I have, I have them plenty. When you read your Bible, don't close it until you get one lesson. Two, ask questions on topics and passages you don't understand. If there are topics and passages in the Bible you don't understand, ask. Esma, I don't understand this topic. Sir, I don't understand this. Ask questions. I went to buy something on Thursday. Now, when I was there, I was about collecting change. The woman, I now told the person, the person, I, I was asking questions. The person now asked me back. I said, what I know is Bible. I don't know another thing apart from Bible. The woman now said to me, sir, are you a pastor? I said, yes. He said, sir, this 666 thing is disturbing my heart. I, didn't, I thought she said CCC, Celestial Church of Christ. 
I said, what is CCC? He said, but you say you are a pastor now. You don't know the mark of the beast. Ah, I said, okay, mark of the beast. So I started lecturing her. He now said, anytime, anytime I hear rapture, I'm afraid. I said, why you should you be afraid? Nobody is yet perfect. Nobody is yet perfect. I said, see, you leave the level of righteousness and leave the rest to grace. If God is going to judge us by level of righteousness, nobody will make heaven. You just follow the principles of the word of God. Do your best. The grace will cover you. So he said, I should teach her about the millennial reign. I taught her. I should teach her about the 666. I taught her. In the market, oh, she was not afraid. He said, but pastors should be teaching only on 666, millennial end time. So that people will be serious. I say, if we teach that, what happened in Nondo State is what will be happening. You know, some people went to lock their self in the church because they said Jesus will come in September. And they said they have been there for four years. Their pastor told them, they said it on news last week, their pastor told them that Jesus is coming in September. I said, so that's a disadvantage. If we teach too much of that one, nobody will walk again. But Jesus said, occupy till I come. That I know a pastor, that pastor is in his 70s now. He said the only reason why he could not buy land is that they told him in 1978 that Jesus was coming in the year 1980. He said, and those days, all Okebola was bush. He now told them, okay, you know what? I'm going to buy a quarter of a plot where I will build a small church. No car park. The church cannot even sit up to 50 people. He just put small things. Since 1978, he has been there till today. You know what the pastor told me in Yoruba? Ah, you know, Jesus, but look over me. Look over me, giddy, giddy, gone. So the woman now said again, so if we teach only that, it has disadvantage. I say it has disadvantage. Even you won't come to shop again. But you know what Jesus said when they asked him, when will the time be when you will come at the end of the world? He said, no man know it except the Father. Please take this into precious. Except the Father. So, any topic you don't understand, ask question. Number three, we'll stop at four. Decide to practice the truth of the Bible you discover daily. That's how it can work for you. Decide to practice the truth of the Bible you discover daily. And five, and four, the last one, make your study and discussion on Bible matters Daily. Make your study and discussion on Bible matters daily. Make it a daily thing. Let it be done on a daily basis. You will see that God will now begin to use the Bible to speak to you. Are you blessed? Yes, Have you learned something? So we are a Bible believing race. We are not the type that we come to church and our Bible will be at home. So anything pastors say, you just swallow. No. We are the type that when the pastor quotes scripture, open it. Confirm. Read along. If I tell you cases I've handled eh, of people that prophets have put in trouble, a prophet is living with his own wife and is telling you that your wife is a witch. And you believe. They told some people, they said that there's this battle that is tying them down. They have gone to several mountains. The battle is still tying them down. I now ask them, is, is light, is darkness powerful than light? Is the devil powerful than God? The devil is not stronger than our God. But the thing is that people are ignorant of who they are. Go back to your Bible. Let's bow down and begin to pray. Father, give me strange understanding of your word. Strange understanding. Pray. Let's begin to pray with it. Strange understanding of your word, O oh God. 
Are you praying? Are you talking to the Lord? Strange understanding of your word. Let me have a, a deep understanding of your word. I didn't hear you pray. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. 